now is a uh, 5:30 then yeah. we can start it yeah okay so good evening uh, good evening all uh, mr philip uh, good evening to ilc um, uh, program and my team um, dr um, jo uh, ac joshi and my it team gulbinder uh, singh uh, for um, organizing um, this fourth webinar program in istd on behalf of istd national uh, headquarters because we are doing a webinar program almost every day for other chapter also doing it. but national office is uh, doing the last four webinar and we have decided to do um, every week um, one or two webinar that is an um, webinar is there so i am glad that nsq has organized this uh, zoom uh, discussion today topic is very uh, renowned topic and many people knows that and i am also interested in, to go the details of this uh, program today so i am staying entire program today so developing nlp skill for managing crisis yes the crisis is going on all over the world all over the country and every industry crisis is going on so so uh, uh, so um, we can how to overcome and what will the what will be the nlp will help us to overcome this crisis we will hear you sir welcome uh, ajay ji um, joshi ji will tell you the details of your uh, background and others i will not go in details i will go only two three lines regarding the uh, regarding the what is nlp and how it is what the the two person that is the one called um uh, mr um richard uh, benlar and uh, and the uh, john grinder and the uh, uh, and the john uh, uh, doing this uh, uh, doing the, the creator creator of this uh, program so on this on the basis of that um they have feel that the um, um, the claim that this is a connection between the neurological process by neuro or linguistic process and behavioral pattern for experienced person can change the achieve and specific goal of life so the two um, two uh, creator this is uh, richard uh, bendler and uh, uh, grinder john grinder has creator in 1970 it has done they have also uh, feel that is a pseudo scientific approach to communication personal development and psychotherapy created by the uh, by them they claim that nlp methodology is a model to skill development and skill of the exceptional people and also allowing anyone to acquire those skill they claim that and now across the world it is going on and it is established this is a skill which is um, utilized everywhere for their um, uh, method methodology and other it has some implication in the um, in the psychology also and also biology so this is the details i can tell you more details our director can elaborate the thing and one more details will get from philip sir uh, from you mr ajay philip will get in details what of the time we have then nlp nlp has give us the ability to control your brain and a new neurological standpoints that helps you change the way of brain and is wired it it also teach us how to control the brain, uh, basic mental health issues everything and how can we implement in our industry that is also a very um, uh, systematic way how can we do this that is also our today's discussion and i feel that our istdian will be will be um, will be introduce this um, uh, this process or this program in their day to day activities going to uh, end of my uh, this is a small thing as a head of the institute i have to tell because i have seen uh, uh, some of the people some new members have joined and uh, maybe they member they may not be member so head of, head of the institute institution of the istd i'll tell uh, something about the hot istd works what is istd vision and mission and what what is the activities of um, uh, last couple of years because 1970 um, istd has established now uh, golden jubilee year is already um, we have uh, celebrated 10th april we have a golden jubilee celebration um, we have done istd is uh, affiliated by the, um, the by the international federation of training and development organization that is a um, ifcdo geneva and also asian regional training organization development organization that is rtdo istd uh, the the vision and mission is istd to effective utilization of human resource to education 
training and development and um, uh, government sector, industry, commerce, education, infrastructure, and everywhere to promote the optimum utilization of manpower. This is the mission and vision. In 1970, we have done this. ISTD is a set, four or five verticals is there. One vertical is a membership. Mm, the, um, the who is not yet member, I would request to be, uh, be a member because we have a lot of activities every year, every month. So as a member, you will entitle all these things. So membership, uh, as a, it is uh, our, um, it is our golden jubilee year is going on. So we have to, uh, we have to, uh, we have increased another uh, 15, 20 days for our discounting rate. That's a 4779 up to 15th May. So as on date, who used to be the member of your organization or your friends or your colleague or your, um, uh, or, or your circle that you will get the um, uh, membership discount as 4779. This is our um, membership. One is the vertical, the membership benefits and others. Uh, you can see our website or you can talk to our national office or chapter office um, that we can uh, give you more details. There's a 50 chapter or offices across the country. We have a large member across the country that is called industry, um, industry uh, institution and also trainers is our member. We have a um, conference and uh, uh, convention is doing every year. There is a four regional conference. One national conference is a national level. Apart from chapter also um, frequently do their conference and knowledge sharing sessions, evening lecture, day-to-day uh, -day activities. So as a member, uh, the new members of the members will entitle to all these things, some subsidized rate and others. Training and development is, 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 is one of our vertical. The, this vertical works uh, across the country. We are the largest training provider of the country and we are doing the training uh, individual um, customized level, chapter level and others with the Department of Personal Administration, Government of India, Ministry of uh, Le uh, Labor, Public Enterprises and others. Apart from that, recently we have launched a one, uh, one um, uh, training program or I can tell you the certification program which is the, ministry, uh, which is the master training, uh, master trainers program with the collaboration of the NOCN. We have launched this program. We have already um, done two program. One is Delhi, another is Bangalore, which is a huge success. Success. So anybody um, interested or budding manager wants to be the, uh, we, we wants to be the uh, master trainer. So you enroll yourself uh, ISPD, ISPD uh, uh, training provider with the help of the NOCN, uh, the UK based organization. That is, is another uh, feather of our ISTD, which we recently launched. Apart from that, uh, we have a uh, publication. Um, there we have uh, published the several uh, uh, books in journals across the country. We are ISTD has uh, several uh, pattern right books as there. We have, a, we have a, um, managing the database of trainers. So um, uh, the trainers, which is not yet ISTD member, you be a member and you enroll yourself in our trainer database so that you can tell that I am an ISTD member and ISTD master trainer. We have a good um, journal that is called IJTD. IJTD. Um, so any articles you wish to give um, that uh, budding uh, manager, HR manager, KTD. Also, also you can do the research, project, research work uh, and also who has a PhD research work. We can also help them. ISTD can help them for the research work and others. We are the part of the uh, Prime Minister uh, Skill India mission. We are the skill um, uh, division. That is, we are the part of the RPL. That is a recognition of prior learning, modular in, uh, employable skill, sectoral skill. All are there. We, we are the no nodal center of government of India. So Skill India mission is also is our part. So um, uh, for the vision of mission, our Prime Minister and government of India and need a nodal uh, center of Skill India. Apart from that, ISTD has a, uh, um, uh, many awards, which many people are not aware that. So uh, members are also requested to be a part of the award. That is, a, we have a, innovation, uh, a national award for innovative training practices. That is also a part of that. Every year, we are doing the best HR practices, best um, uh, organization in the country, PSU, private, public organization, which we are there. They are, um, uh, we are assess them and best HR practice, we are doing that. We have a book award. Every year, the, uh, we are uh, doing this book award. Who are the, um, uh, who are the budding uh, manager, who are the writers can publish book to ISTD. So book award also we are doing. 
best member award best chapter and best small chapter award best paper award kamala nehru nehru award that also we have there so anybody wants to be the part of the award so that you can go to our website or you have to um, keep in touch to our uh, national office national direct uh, director uh, director office so that what is the process and procedure so that you can uh, part of the thing apart from that we are the lucrative the, the diploma ist diploma is the largest diploma holder last 50 years we are doing it and almost 30 35 uh, alumni across the country so that diploma is the 18 month um, uh, uh, so 18 months course this is a distance plus classroom process and um, and the HTC branch is started very soon. So I would request all the ISTDN to um, uh, keep talking to the diploma to your circle so that uh, we can get a substantial um, uh, diploma students and do our best for the uh, updated syllabus since is there. So all these things the ISTD work apart from that we are also uh, started another verticals and also another SBU model. So as a true sense, ISTD is the largest training institute, training organization in the country. We are work hand to hand to the, our government of India, public private sector. And also it is, it is the largest uh, association of the training association, HR association of the country. So those who are not yet member, so I request everybody to be a member or if somebody has in your organization or any institution, if there is no member, so you insist them to be a part of the ISTD, the largest association. Apart from that, it's true sense, ISTD is the largest institute in the country, and we are you are doing for human resource and development, and um, we, are the, we are the largest and pioneer organization. So hope everybody will enjoy today's uh, program, and I would request uh, Dr. Joshi, our director, to take over the, the thing and host the program and give the more details, whatever I can left it and give a little bit um, uh, details of our uh, speaker, Mr. Ajoy uh, Phillips, um, who is uh, giving the NLP, uh, NLP um, program today in one and a half hours time after Q and after Q and A. So thank you, Joshi Ji, for organizing thank this you, sir. program. Uh, program thank you, sir. Of national office, you and your team and your IT team. I'm glad that you have done every week two, three program and on behalf of my national council and others, I will be happy that um, thank you for your team and activities. Thank you very much, Joshi. Thank you, sir. So in fact, you have left very little for me. You have introduced ISTD in such a nice and very elaborate manner. I'm very sure that all the participants here have got a overview of ISTD, its activities and all that. Uh, sir, you have wonderfully covered the topic as well. So I will really not go into the details because whatever you have said, I have also read the same. So you have covered, I'll straightway come to my uh, uh, Mr. Philip, Ajay Philip, who is uh, the person today to talk about the subject. I'd like to introduce him a brief introduction of uh, Mr. Ajay Phillips. Mr. Ajay Phillips is an uh, entrepreneur and uh, principal training consultant, Dominion Phillips Consultancy. He is a Meta NLP Master Practitioner and a Certified NLP Life Coach, ISNS Certification from USA. He is a visionary and has the passion to build people as stable and strong global citizens. He has over 25 years of experience in learning and development, skill development, corporate training, HR solutions and academics. He has been associated with various organizations like Tech Mahindra, Sutherland Global Services, Converges, YCC Group Engineering, College Wildos, Intellinet First Credit Services, Bharti, YWAM, Heading for the Nations, Congress, WBN, etc. He uses NLP techniques and methodology in all the workshops which are interactive, practical, and involves exercises based on NLP tools. He is a postgraduate in psychology. Again, I welcome uh, Mr. Phillips to this program. Without uh, taking uh, further time into any other introduction, I will straightway request uh, Mr. Phillips to start the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, 
Dr. Joshi and uh, Dr. Ray for wonderful opening. And uh, it's my pleasure to be on this panel uh, delivering some important and exciting topic uh, related to human technology. And I welcome all the participants. And I know participants uh, are waiting to hear about something that is very powerful and very transformational. And uh, uh, time has come that we understand and know what neuro-linguistic programming is all about. And uh, uh, this is something which I was already looking forward. And I want to uh, thank uh, our Nagpur chapter uh, chairman, uh, Mr. Santosh Kumar, as well as uh, uh, Dr. Kurian Daniel, uh, because uh, we did this program in Nagpur and it was very exciting and everyone wanted that this should be propagated to all sections of society and not just ISTD, Pan India, but all the sections of society. Why? Because we are talking about something that is with uh, with which we can all relate with, or it's to do with all of us. It's about human technology. It's about you. It's about me. So, because it deals with humans, and because we are human first before anybody else, like engineer, minister, chief minister you know, a businessman or whatever, whatever the titles or skills we possess before that, we are humans first. And it is exciting and also very important to understand and know about ourselves, what makes us what we are. And uh, most of the time we are, you know, fighting or, you know, in the internal conflict to understand and discover what is happening inside of me. And if you agree, I mean, I, you will agree with me that most of the time we there is a conflict that takes place within us rather than outside. And discovering ourselves, you know, scientifically in a way by which we can understand and know, uh, you know, uh, in every blocks and in, in, in a very explicit manner, it's the way by which we will be able to effectively learn and manage ourselves. So let's get into the uh, topic itself and I will uh, connect, I will share the PPT on the screen. And uh, so just a moment. All right, so now um, a little bit of idea was uh, given by Dr. Ray about what is neuro-linguistic programming. So I might be repeating some of the things, whatever he said. Neuro-linguistic programming is an approach to communication, personal development, and psychotherapy. And when we say it's an approach to communication, neuro-linguistic programming is called as a communication model it's a communication, not only between two humans, it's a communication within a human made of brain, mind, body, and emotion system. So there is a communication that takes place within us all the time. And it is about personal development. Now, personal development, I consider this um, uh, word or this title, personal development, a little diluted because uh, we know so many personality development classes all around us, uh, people uh, do and people join. Uh, in NLP, we can say personal design or personality design. So it helps us in designing our own personality. And the third thing is psychotherapy. So a lot of um, psychologists worldwide, they use NLP tools and techniques in dealing with their patients, even if those are of severe nature and they are able to uh, give them relief and uh, deliverance from the problems which they uh, are, uh, you know, uh, infected. And um, in a layman's term, those who are not aware of um, much of the psychological terms, 
In the layman's language, we call it is the technology of human mind and behavior or what makes people do what they do. And when, when I, whenever I uh, look about neuro-linguistic programming and whenever I try to explain to common people, because you know, in our programs, there are all kinds of people. They come right from highly educated uh, uh, doctorates to common students. And sometimes even just businessmen who are businessmen, but they are not, you know, uh, well versed with all kinds of jargons. So I always give them this one particular example of uh, uh, about neuro linguistic programming. There is a saying, uh, there is a song in Hindi, which most of us know about it. That song was sung uh, uh, by Hrithik Roshan and Hrithik Roshan was uh, singing that song and that song in Hindi says, Main aisa hu to main aisa kyo hu? And you know, this is a question we all go through in our lives. And most of the time we go through this question when we are in uh, the age of adolescence, where we are trying to discover ourselves, uh, what makes us the way I am. And Hrithik Roshan was also, you know, he's, he's representing people trying to figure out, trying to understand what makes them do what they do, why they are like that. And this song, the second part says, you know, main aisa hu to main aisa kyu hu? And the, the, the last line says, main aisa hi hu. And what happens, because we are unable to find the answers, we settle up, we settle with whatever philosophy, whatever answers given to us by our parents or by peers, by through education, or maybe in the today's world through Google. And we try to discover and, you know, we settle with whatever, you know, we are. And we say, oh, this is what I am. So, boss, you accept me the way I am. This is what makes me what I am. So, I am unique in my own way. And we settle with that. But over here in neurolinguistic programming, what we will be doing is we will be telling you what makes you what you are. And what makes you do, we will be telling you the power that drives you or makes you do. So this is one of the major parts we are going to see uh, in neuro-linguistic programming, not today completely because it's just a one hour session, but throughout the neuro-linguistic uh, uh, sessions, we discover about ourselves. And the second thing we tell them, that we will also tell you how you can change into what you want to become. And that's the power of transformation. Neuro-linguistic programming carries. It has the power to transform you and change you strategically into what you want to become. Now that's a big thing. You know, in the corporate world, uh, 20 years ago, people used to say, oh, you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can, you know, uh, give skills or provide skills to somebody, but you can't change the behavior of the person. But neuro-linguistic programming has a technology by which you can change the behavior, by which you can change the outcomes which you are looking for in your personal life, in your business, in your professional, and in your area of, you know, work and domain. So this is very powerful. And um, a little bit of uh, the creators of NLP, I just want to add to what uh, Dr. Ray said that it was created by Richard Bandler and John Grinder in California, United States in 1972 specifically. And Richard Bandler was a mathematician and a programmer. He was a student of mathematics. And John Grinder was a professor of linguist. Now you can understand and relate with neuro-linguistic programming, how that term has come or, you know, into existence. Now they were working on transcripting audio tapes of famous psychotherapist and psychiatrist Milton Erickson and Virginia Satire, who was also a family therapist. And they found patterns while they were listening to the audios, they found patterns, which when they started to replicate or, you know, uh, do what or say the way they were talking, 
they found similar results on the audience to which they were addressing. So, especially John uh, uh, Richard Bandler, uh, he, he started to mimic actually Milton Erickson, just like, you know, we have the uh, uh, people mimicking Amitabh Bachchan, you know, uh, talking in his tone and language. And you can see the impact of that just voice modulation and talking. So when he started to uh, do those uh, patterns, started to speak with those patterns, he saw the results similar to those great uh, psychotherapists saw. And then they started to study more and they started to find patterns of these great uh, successful people and they started to model it. And not only that, then they further started to mod model Fritz, Bull, uh, Fritz Pulse, uh, who is uh, uh, famous for Gestalt theory, Alfred Korzybski, uh, Noam Chomsky, Chomsky was a linguist and many other more successful people. And they started to model and the result or the end result of this whole project was neuro-linguistic programming. And this actually took the world by storm in 1970s and 80s till the time came when uh, there were some issues uh, between these two guys, John Grinder and uh, because it became huge, hugely popular. And uh, now let me just uh, give some more perspective about neuro-linguistic programming. Neuro-linguistic programming is a multidisciplinary science which has drawn principles from cognitive psychology, behavioral sciences, computer programming and mathematics, linguistics, and human potential movement. Now, I belong to human potential movement. My background has been uh, human potential movement. So uh, when it came to psychology, I was not very much drawn towards it. But when I started to uh, attend few NLP sessions, just like today, uh, I started to draw towards NLP and I uh, started to explore this field uh, because it had some common factor that is human potential movement. And later on, when I realized uh, the power of neuro-linguistic programming firsthand in my own personal life, uh, that's when I said, oh, this is it. This is what I want, you know, to go into deeper learning. And we invested a lot and went through a learning process of uh, neuro-linguistic programming. Uh, various stages. And uh, so this is a combination of all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, multidisciplinary uh, sciences, which has, you know, like, you know, it's like, you know, you, you're getting all kinds of ingredients and you're cooking a wonderful biryani or maybe a wonderful dish. So um, Bandler and Grinder claim that NLP can treat problems such as phobias, depression, have the disorder, psychosomatic illnesses, myopia, allergy, common cold, learning disorders, and much more often in a single session. And that's what we have actually seen in our sessions, in our training sessions, in our counseling sessions, in our therapeutic sessions, that people have come out of dep depressions uh, who were on heavy medication for years together. And they have come out and they have, in fact, stopped even taking medication. So we have seen tremendous uh, impact of neuro-linguistic programming and its therapy, not only in all these listed uh, um, issues that people face, but much, 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 much more. You know, In fact, I would like to tell you that neuro-linguistic programming touches all aspect of human humanity or humankind. Anything that deals with you, it touches that. So that's the reason in our NLP session, we have all kinds of people. Why? Because we are dealing with human minds, which are, you know, which function in a similar manner, in spite of various different skills they possess, but the human technology is same. So we have the same kind of people attending in this, you know, one batch from all different kinds of background. Neurolinguistic programming has been adopted by hypnotherapists, as I said earlier. 
it was greatly taken you know by the organization of business leaders and multinational companies and many government organizations like fbi cia as a required skill for self management peak performance people management and leadership now if if you if you'll just go back into the background about psychology and all these things you will see multinational companies are at the forefront in dealing with human mind and human performance issues and the moment nlp was you know brought by richard bandler and uh, john grinder the most i mean they were most uh, used they were they were used mostly by the multinational companies why because multinational companies are more focused on performance peak performance and higher productivity and they realize that it is very important for them not only to acquire this skills but also to bring down into their system the parts of this uh, skills so that they can achieve high performance and productivity and one more important thing the biggest challenge is people management how to manage people and today most of the great leaders both in india and abroad they go through the training either directly new uh, uh, a uh, neuro linguistic programming training or the training based on neuro linguistic programming techniques they go through these trainings to learn how to manage people effectively how to make people do what you want them to do because you need to have the technology that makes people do what they uh, the way they do and that's the reason they go and acquire uh, these skills and i can name them but i will not going to name these people uh, over here now it has been recognized by uh, united kingdom council of psychotherapy and other uh, uh, psychotherapy organizations as well i have not listed all of them uh, but there is a lot of you know uh, uh, vandalism also against neuro linguistic programming because of uh, certain vested interest as i gave you an example of how uh, people through couple of sittings or maybe just one sitting come out of depression and stop taking medication so that impacts a particular industry and that is the reason you know there is a challenge to another industry and that's the reason there is a lot of vandalization done against neuro linguistic programming however there are you know some people have listed 442 research abstracts uh, there is one report says that there are over 3000 research paper published on neuro linguistic programming and since 1970s neuro linguistic programming has evolved and grown into one of the most effective tools in managing change and behavior now these are the key words i have mentioned in red you know these are the effective tools of managing change and behavior and if you see the word change you know we all know change is constant right but the most difficult part today we understand is how to change we know we have to change but we don't know how to change and this is a challenge not just to the multinational companies to bring change you know but it is also for individuals to bring change whenever there is a need of change and the biggest example of change is what we are doing now right we are you know learning to manage change and some people are really finding it very difficult to manage the change and also behavior and finally i added wellness the reason why i added wellness because 70% of uh, sicknesses are directly related to the human mind and if you can take care of your mind you have taken care of 70% of your bodily problems that's the power of uh, you know uh, knowing neuro linguistic programming because if you know what is happening in your mind and you have a control over it and you know how to effectively manage it you have taken care of about 70% of your issues related to health so this is very powerful it's very powerful 
I mean, seventy percent of issues. If you're taking care, you are saving. You know, there there are some doctors over here. Uh, it, it goes against their business. So you know, you'll be saving a lot of money. You know, from medication. So these are very powerful things, and the journey to understand and learn NLP is transformational and exciting. Transformation is a key word over here. You will never be the same again. In our NLP uh, basic program, you know, we tell our participants the first session, which is of two hours. If you don't experience the power of transformation, you can, you know, refund the money and go back. And till now, more than 350 people have attended and nobody had ever left the program and, uh, you know, asked for the refund. Why? Because we know that these are very powerful tools and techniques that change people. And everybody knowingly, consciously or unconsciously, they get transformed through the training programs of NLP, which we conduct. What happens when you go through the, the, the learning of neurolinguistic programming, there are a couple of things that happen. A lot of things happen, but I'm just you know, going to uh, speak four major things that happens to you. The first thing is that you discover yourself, which is also called as self-awareness. And the second thing is you discover about others accurately or in a better way. That is social awareness. And then you learn to manage yourself, which is self-management. And you also learn to manage other people as well, social management. And these four things are not, you know, these four things are actually, you can see on this uh, quadrant was, uh, you know, designed and made famous by uh, Daniel Coleman. Um, most of us might be knowing about him. And it is also called as emotional intelligence. So the direct impact of learning neuro-linguistic programming is that your emotional intelligence is developed. It's an automatic. You don't have to work on it. The moment you start to learn, go through the training process, do some exercises, you start to experience transformation. And one of the transformational experiences that you realize that your emotional intelligence has you know, grown and developed to a new level. And I will not dwell much into this quadrant. You can find it anywhere in the Google, the quadrant of emotional intelligence. Um, there's another thing I just wanted to add over here is that everybody wants to be a success. They want to succeed in their lives. And, you know, in 19th century, the whole world was thinking that IQ is the one that contributes to success. And later on, you know, in the, uh, the, the turn of the century and later, they realized that there are some people with low IQ were much more successful than those people with high IQ. And when they started to, you know, do research, they found that they had some other skills by which they were more successful than those people with high IQ. And they realized that those skills were emotional quotient, or the other word is emotional intelligence. And later on, some research and study showed that emotional intelligence contribute 65% of, you know, in the success of a person as compared to IQ. And what happens is that we always appreciate IQ and we always focus on IQ and we say that this guy is, has high IQ, this guy has high IQ, or this is an average IQ person. But we don't realize that IQ has only one third um, contribution in the success of a person. Two third is EQ. And that's the reason you will find that people with you know, social skills, self-management, and uh, managing others, they are more successful as leaders, as business leaders, as political leaders, as you know, famous personalities, as you know, entrepreneurs, they are successful in uh, uh, you know, as compared to those people with only high IQ and low emotional intelligence. So, 
NLP touches all areas of life, no matter who you are. As long as you are human, it applies because NLP is all about the human technology. And that's the reason, you know, we all shifted from 2G phone to uh, a 4G phone. And if we only use the 4G phone for making calls and SMS without actually exploring how powerful that device is and what all you can do with the device, you know, we will not be able to uh, utilize or discover or understand its potential. And the same is with ourselves, that unless we understand and know about human technology, about us, we will never be able to explore ourselves to the you know, full potential or to a, you know, a larger potential that will be just lying you know, unused. So let's you know, explore neuro-linguistic programming and its potential. And uh, before we can uh, go ahead and uh, do this, uh, we will do a small exercise, the exercise of relaxation. And everybody uh, must be sitting on their chair. And if you're not, you can take a chair and you can sit on your chair. And even as you are sitting on your chair, I want you to do a little slouch on your chair, you know, and. Uh, even as you are slouching on your chair and listening to my voice, I want you to close your eyes. And even as you are closing your eyes, I want you to take a deep, long breath. And even as you are breathing in, and breathing out, I want you to feel the muscles of your feet. Even as you are feeling the muscles of your feet, I want you to relax or release the muscles of your feet. And even as you are breathing in and breathing out, I want you to release the muscles of your ankle. And even as you are breathing in and breathing out, release the muscles of your calf. And as you are breathing in and breathing out, release the muscles of your thighs and the muscles of your back and the muscles of your shoulder. Release the muscles of your hands and your fingers, even as you are breathing in and breathing out, release the muscles of your neck and the muscles of your eyes. Breathe in and breathe out. And even as you are breathing in and breathing out, relax yourself and gradually open your eyes. How are you feeling? Are you feeling relaxed? Are your muscles relaxed? I know we cannot uh, respond on that, but I know the results. Most of you have experienced relaxation, calm, 
quiet. Your heartbeat is now, you know, beating in a very slow and calm manner. And this is one of the exercises we do in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And you can do this exercise whenever you are facing any kind of a panic issues or anxiety issues or any kind of, you know, uh, phobia. What you can do is you can just do this exercise and relax yourself and bring down your heartbeat and calm yourself down. And you can relax. So now, even as we have uh, enjoyed the relaxation, the moment of relaxation, and also I just want to, you know, bring out uh, the importance of we gathering over here and learning and adding value to our own life, to our own personal personality. And, you know, this is an exciting moment which we have received and thanks to coronavirus, because, you know, we live in a mad, mad world and especially those in the corporate world where every second and every hour counts and you don't get time for your own self. You don't get time for your own family. But this is a time and moment when you, know, you are able to look within yourself. And this is very exciting. And not only that, but you are able to add value to yourself through various means and various ways, including today's webinar. So let's be grateful for a moment for this opportunity that we got. Otherwise, we could have not, you know, because we are busy most of the time chasing the rainbow. So I will go ahead in detail about uh, the definition of neuro-linguistic programming. NLP is a connection between the neurological process, language, and behavioral patterns learned through experience. Now, what is neurological process? What is neuro? When we talk about the term neuro, you know, when we did for the first time uh, in Nagpur, the term neuro-linguistic programming, most of the people thought that it is to do with the, uh, you know, disease or the problems of brain. And uh, many people, they didn't turn up because they had a particular uh, understanding about this term neuro uh, from the neurological department of medical sciences. But in NLP, when we talk about neuro, it is, of course, talks about our brain. It talks about our nervous system that spreads or extends from the brain right to the you know, ends of our body, that is our toe. Uh, and also it speaks about the mind, the memory, the mindset, the thinking process. The process that takes place within the brain, you know, neurons, pathways, neurological pathways. And there are many uh, terms related with brain, both the physical term as well as the term that is not physical. Emotions. And language, neuro-linguistic programming. Linguistic means language. It's a connection between the brain and the language. Now we can understand from the definition over here, there is a connection between the brain and the language. 
So now when we talk about the language, you know, there is a language of brain. The brain does not understand Hindi, English, Marathi. Brain don't know what is Hindi. Brain, don't know, brain doesn't know what is Marathi. Brain doesn't know what is Tamil or any other language. The brain has its own language. And the greatest thing is that it is universal. That means every human has the same language of the brain. Now we are not going to dwell much into detail. What is the uh, what is brain and how it functions and how you know uh, it works? Why? Because you know it takes time for that. But over here in the definition, why I'm putting it over here? Because it's in the definition. Not only just the definition, but it's on the, on the name of this. Uh, uh, human technology, NLP, neuro linguistic. So the language of the brain through which, you know, we communicate within ourselves and not just within ourselves, but outside through the spoken language also. The spoken language is Hindi, English, Marathi, the known languages. Of course, you know, people fight for the language, known languages, but actually all humans have the same language of the brain if you understand this you will realize you know how silly is that and the third thing is behavioral patterns learned through experience which is programming what is a program so when we when, whenever we hear this term program those people who have done their it or you know um, mca or bca course or maybe even in their college they have and, you know, learned about this term programming. In a simple language, what is a program? It's a set of instruction in a sequence, in a, in a serial order. Okay, programming is a set of instructions in sequential order. There is an input and then there is an output. And in between there are decision making, uh, various, uh, you know, uh, the flow chart shows how there are, uh, you know, many various uh, layers of the programs uh, you know are connected and made and uh, how based on the input you know the output is produced so that's the basic understanding about programming programming is a set of instruction when an input is given it produces a desired output that means whatever the program says it produces it as an output and when we talk about the behavioral patterns learned through experience in neuro linguistic programming, programming is a, a set of instruction that is written in our brain. And whenever there is a trigger or an input, we produce behavior, we produce result, we produce reaction or action. So there is an input, the process takes place in our brain, the program runs, and we produce the result and it's very exciting if you understand this it's actually very exciting how this takes place are we learning computer technology no we are not learning computer technology we are learning human technology and if you if you learn computer technology what is the common thing between computer and humans both have language right computer also functions in language Humans also communicate through language. And not only computers have known language like English, Hindi, computers have machine language also. Similar brain also has its own machine language. You know, you can call it machine language, which is similar. Or the language of like, you know, zeros and one in computer, human brain has its own language system and this whole process takes place faster than the fastest computer in the world your brain your brain's processing you know speed four years ago i think uh, uh, when i found it was four times faster than the fastest computer in the world supercomputer in the world so the processing speed of your brain is four times faster. So the whole process, you know, there is an input 
and the whole process takes place and then there is an output reaction or a behavior So this is the general idea about neuro-linguistic programming. And when we will be learning this in detail, the detailed learning will be like, you know, uh, I will explain you with an analogy. Uh, if you have ever seen a program in Discovery Channel in which, you know, they, uh, they you know, uh, uh, fire a bullet uh, on the pumpkin or, you know, on watermelon and then they see it frame by frame that how the bullet you know ejects out of the uh, uh, the barrel of the gun and how it travels and then how it explodes the watermelon so this they, they you know they see frame by frame in very slow motion so when we learn neuro linguistic programming at the higher level uh, especially the levels uh, where you know you learn mastery you know actually you learn frame by frame how it goes how it functions because you know just like bullet it just happens and you know you you only see the end result a trigger and the end result but the whole process in between is so fast that you can never see and understand unless and until you know you go through the learning of neuro linguistic frame by frame, frame by frame, and understand okay, this happened, and next after that, this happened, and then later on, this happened. And you know, there is the whole uh, programs and layers of programs that run at the background before the behavior is produced. So, when we talk about the programming in human behavior, programming can be spoken as the habits, our behavior the habits, the culture, the belief systems, the value systems, the dogmas, the theories, the philosophies. Now, these are all programs. These are all programs. And we react or behave according to the program installed in our brains. Who installed? Of course, our parents. Of course, the nature around us. And not only the environment around us installs a program in us, the experiences install the program in us. And right from the childhood, you know, the program starts installing in us. And, you know, by the time you grow up, to adulthood, you know, already millions of programs are already written in your mind that produces, you know, all kinds of behavioral patterns. It's very exciting. It is very exciting. And that's why I say, you are the product of your past. You are the product of your past. What, what do I mean by that? Not the past life. I'm talking about this life, you know, from your date of birth till now. Whatever you are, you are the product of your past. So whatever behavior, skills, whatever you are displaying, your personality, it is the product of your past, whatever happened with you in the past is now running you. You know, that past could be as old as yesterday or maybe an hour ago. Okay, so right from your childhood till now, you know, you are running yourself through the programs that are written in your mind in your brain. You know, some people call it, you know, uh, wiring, you know, have you heard the word wiring, the brain wiring? You know, people call it, they, they, call, they give these different terms, brain wiring, neural pathways, you know, all these terms are given, but actually these are the programs that run. When? When there is a trigger. 
the moment the triggers the moment the trigger is you know a stimuli is seen or you know whenever we experience that stimuli the program runs and we produce a result all right so now uh, quickly we will go uh, to our uh, you know main area of discussion is managing you know using nlp to manage ourselves during the crisis so now we all are going through a situation which we had never gone in fact the whole world had never gone before this kind of a situation we had pandemics in the past but the way it is happening now with awareness and communication system and all audio visual you know uh, around us and uh, the the amount of business and travel and everything uh, coming to standstill this has never ever happened and from a you know highway we are now sitting in a place in our homes you know where most of the time you know we we wonder what should we be doing now okay we might have enjoyed some moments week one with our family eating good food you know taking care of some chores uh, some household you know work but as the time started to you know increase you know because of living life in uh, on the highway you know when i say highway i mean you know you are always busy right from morning till evening suddenly coming to this position you know you are experiencing some kind of you know issues which we call it as adjustment issues and we all go through this whenever there is a new job which we take it's an adjustment adjustment issue whenever we go to a new place there is an adjustment adjustment issue so now how we deal with adjusting ourselves to a new environment to a new situation today only when while we were testing about you know webinar on my laptop i realized that the a uh, light which is adequate uh, for recording over my phone is not uh, adequate or you know through my laptop so i had to adjust now oh get some more lights over here so we are now learning to adjust to the new environment we all are learning in fact we are learning new habits or rather why not develop new habits especially men right we don't have our servants you know in a house helping us for the chores and the whole you know um, burden of work is on the women and why not you know develop some habit by which you know we do some chores and you know support and help and contribute so these are all you know developing new habits and this is something which is very critical if both husband and wife are working if the wife is already housewife then her situation is the same maybe a little bit i will not say same exactly but you know she is now seeing you know you all the time at home so even that is an adjustment for her so everybody is adjusting to a new environment new situation so what is the best thing what we can do is develop new habits how we can develop a habit you know there is the 21 times rule some of might be knowing about it uh, there is one uh, psychotherapist said it's a 66 times rule so how we develop a new habit if you keep on doing something for 21 times then you learn that and that's a rule which says so when you start to do for the first time it's difficult for you you don't like it 
you don't enjoy it but the moment you keep on doing it for 21 times you know it's not exactly 21 times but it's it just you can just take that as a figure you know you start to develop the new habit which you never had before and let me tell you habits are programs all the habits which we have are learned behavior some some day down in our lives we have learned from you know some situation and developed those habits so all habits are learned behavior it can be unlearned new habits can be also learned how i will give an example I will give you an example of uh, learning how to drive a car. So when we talk about learning how to drive a car, we get an instruction in sequence by the uh, uh, car um, school uh, instructor that you need to follow these, 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 you know, in a sequence. Like you need to put the keys in the keyhole and then you need to check the gears in neutral. You need to put your left leg on the ex, uh, clutch, right leg on the brake. And uh, he tells you where is the accelerator. It's on the right side. And uh, the steering, he tells all the details. And he gives you a sequence that after checking all these things, the mirror also, then you, you know, turn on or switch off, uh, switch on your car. And the moment you press the key like this, the car will automatically start. And when you do that, what you need to do is you need to press, you know, the clutch with your left leg and then shift the gear to gear number one, like this. And once you do that, you need to slowly, gradually release the clutch and release the brake also. And then you put your right feet on the accelerator and start to accelerate the car and look forward and through the steering control the direction of the car. So this is the instruction that is given to you maybe one, two, three, four, five times. And you start to follow the sweet sequential order. And because you have not learned this exactly, what you do is sometimes you might, you know, uh, get, uh, into different sequence like maybe you might might just release the clutch suddenly instead of releasing it slowly so what happens is that you do it again and when you when you do that for the first day when you drive that car on the road what happens you drive for for a kilometer or two and then you are already exhausted and tired and you take a deep breath Ah, that's enough for the day. Oh, wow. And then second day, you do the same thing. Third day, you do the same thing. And gradually, you increase the, you know, your driving distance. And after a month, the instructor just sits by and you drive the car in the fourth gear. Occasionally, instructor telling you. And down the line, after one year, when in the night 2 a.m. you have to get up to pick up somebody from the airport and you are half sleep and you drive your car in that half sleep, you know, not, not in the full alertness of yours. What happens? Suddenly one dog crosses the road. What happens? Your legs presses the brake. You don't even think. You don't even think, what should I do? What happens? Your legs presses the brake what is happening over here now you are or your body mind and emotion everything is now functioning in automation so when you were first you know working to learn how to drive a car you were getting tired why because a new program was being written in your brain And whenever the new program is written, you know, you're doing everything consciously, consciously, consciously. So whatever work you do consciously, it is tiring. It takes your energy and you get tired. 
And after one year, when you are driving on the towards the airport and you are not in the full awareness level of yours, even if you just see the dog, you know, from your that sleepy eyes, your legs immediately presses the brake. What is happening is that when you learned how to drive the car, time came when from conscious level, you shifted into the con unconscious level. And now after a year, you are actually driving the car at unconscious level. And after the year, you are able to drive 500 kilometers nonstop. That's an unconscious level. So when a person performs in the unconscious level, they don't get tired. So how we develop habits or programs, you know, when we keep on doing that again and again, you know, for a certain number of time, till it gets into our system, our unconscious level, our body, mind, emotion, everything, you know, uh, coordinates, it gets into a muscle. So this is a time when you can develop new habits. It might be difficult for a couple of times in the beginning, as I told you, because you're doing it consciously. But once you keep on doing that, it becomes unconscious. And when you do at unconscious level, you don't feel tired at all. Second thing, what you can do in adjustment issues, uh, when you're facing, create a schedule for yourself and the family, because you know we are used to a system which is called as procedures, you know. We want everything to be done according to a procedure or set of rules. So create one for yourself, maybe in consent of everybody, so that nobody feels that, you know, they are being, you know, made to do something like it's a, you know, they should not read otherwise. When, when you involve them with their consent, their willingness, then, you know, because human brain functions in procedures also. So create a procedure for yourself. Create new strategies and systems. You know, use arts and sports indoor as the way by which you can, you know, recreate yourself, enjoy your moment. You know, one day one guy came and he told me that I have given my children, I'm teaching them, uh, there is a game of 25 boxes, which is called as chauras or, you know, Kauri, you know, in Nagpur, and there are various names to that game. And when I remembered, I remembered, oh, we used to play so much in 1980s uh, during summer vacation. So, you know, you can bring all kinds of those games and sports, arts, your music, your painting, your, you know, uh, anything. It could be cooking, it could be craft work, it could be gardening. So there is so much inside of you, which you want to do. This is the time when actually you can explore. And there is something which I want to add over here is during the crisis, there is an important topic of NLP semantics. I know we are running out of uh, time. And I will quickly, uh, you know, try to finish it up. So semantics means meanings. Humans are meaning making creature. You know, we give meanings to events and we give meanings to situations or incidents. And um, based on those meanings, then we react to those, those situations. Now, Before we can come to this uh, term, social distancing, uh, I just want to quickly uh, uh, give an example of semantics, how powerful semantics are. Now there are, uh, I'll give you an example of three guys walking down a road in a colony. One was an American, the second was an Indian, and third was an Egyptian. And all the three guys were walking, and one black cat pops out from one of the compound walls of one of the house and comes on the middle of the road and looks to all looks to the eyes of these three guys and then after a moment you know walks past through to the other side of the road into the other house and the moment this happens 
suddenly the Indian guy stops. Why the Indian guy stops? He is thinking in his mind that now the cat has crossed and I will experience bad omen in whatever I'm going to do. And the second person, the American, the moment he sees the cat, what he does, he just you know, bends forward to you know, try to pet or touch the cat. And the moment he tries to do, the cat you know, runs away. And the Egyptian, not the present day Egyptian, the olden days Egyptian, you know, the Egyptian who lived in the times of, you know, pyramids. And this guy, when he saw the cat, he got very excited. He says, oh, I have a good omen today. Everything, whatever I do is going to happen good for me. Now tell me who is the right out of three. Now, I will leave that answer to you. But the point I want to make over here is that all the three people reacted to the same one incident in three different ways. Why their reactions were different? Because all the three people gave different meaning to that particular incident, which is the cat crossing your path. Because an Indian gave a meaning to that incident as bad omen, you know, he was scared, afraid, you know, fear gripped his heart, he stopped. And an Egyptian, because he gave a meaning as of, you know, because an Egyptian, uh, old Egyptian uh, culture, cats were considered as divine, okay? So because he gave cat a meaning as divine. He said, oh, I have seen God, you know, all things are going to happen good to me. So the reaction was very different, exactly opposite to an Indian. And the American probably, he must be just a logician or, you know, he just bent forward to just pet a cat. So the meaning which we give to the situations and the circumstances, we react or act accordingly and that's why all the three people had three different reactions to the same situation that's what's happening all over the world coronavirus is one thing that is taking place and you have all kinds of reactions all kinds of reactions and these reactions based are based on you know what are the meanings you are giving it's very important and if you want to change the reaction, the, what is the key? The key is change the meaning. If you change the meaning, your reaction will change. So this is one of the most important uh, part of neuro-linguistic programming. Why? Because most of the things which we do is out of the meaning making system. We give meanings to the incidents that we experience and late, then later on we react accordingly. So now coming back to the word social distancing you know uh, the government worldwide is asking us to maintain social distancing and i have over here written social distancing and i have you know uh, put a cut mark over it you must be surprised what is this as an nlp -er, when you look to this term social distancing it actually goes against our you know very nature we are a social you know, animal, that's what I'm saying. We cannot live alone. We are not designed to live in isolation. And that's the reason we have family as the basic social system. And then we have friends, then we have neighbors, and then we have communities. And then larger, we have our ethnic groups. And then still larger, we have our own, you know, nation. So we are designed to live in a social environment. And the moment this word comes, social distancing, now you will understand the power of neuro-linguistic programming, um, the, la the power of language in neuro-linguistic programming, that social distancing makes us to, you know, not to interact with people. It is not the social distancing that is required 
It is the physical distancing is required in coronavirus pandemic situation. We are not supposed to, you know, distance ourselves from people socially. We need to distance ourselves physically. Keep a distance physically. But you can communicate, you can talk, you can laugh, you can, you know, sing, you can have fun, you can, you know, you can rejoice, you can do all kinds of things, but at a physical distance. And we need to have social solidarity. That means we also empathize with people who are not in the best of the situations, like the poor, the immigrant workers, or those doctors, or you know, people uh, who are working still outside. So what is the meaning are we giving to the you know, lockdown situation? Is it a jail or is it security? Is it bondage or is it safety? What is the meaning are you giving to the lockdown situation? Is it to relax at home or something else? So depending upon the meaning you give to the whole scenario, you will start to experience the neurological uh, you know, feelings, emotions, you know, your heart will beat accordingly. And then you will also experience in your body. And then you will also produce a behavior. Uh, Mr. Phillips, uh, uh, can you conclude? Because we have yes. to go for the question answer session also. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so just I will request you to conclude. Yes, yes. All right. So what is the meaning are you giving? If you change the meaning, you will experience something very different. Your behavior, your output, everything will change. All right, so uh, avoid listening and speaking toxic information, whether through you know, unverified WhatsApp or you know, news channels who are very toxic in nature because that will uh, help you reduce uh, the toxicity of the situation. So I will not go ahead with a, another exercise of conditioning because it will take some more time. And um, I will just end up about uh, the neuro-linguistic workshop which we conduct. Our approach is multidisciplinary. We use all the five uh, methodology, the neuro-linguistic programming, cognitive psychology, behavioral science, human potential, and principle of management in our learning and development programs. There is a pathway to develop your NLP skills. You know, we have designed modules for Indians according to the, you know, time frames Indian can give. And the, the first module is a discovery module, which is the NLP basic module. The second one is a transformational leadership module, which is an NLP advanced module. And the third is NLP practitioner certification. And all these programs are designed for one or two days of workshop and uh, so that you can learn out of it. And uh, we have now, because in the lockdown, we got the opportunity to design the same program on webinar as, as well, so that we can understand and learn and develop the NLP skills for success or successful living. So, we have designed the programs for webinar as well, and uh, we will be rolling out in a week. And uh, you can definitely, uh, you know, note down my number. You can message me on my WhatsApp, and uh, uh, you can let me know whether you are interested or not. And then we will be sharing you the details of how we can go about and learn the NLP skills. So thank you very much for listening and giving. Uh, me the time and thank you Dr. Joshi, thank you Dr. Ray and thank you dear all the participants. I'm unable to see you but I hope you enjoyed this one hour with us. Thank you very thank much. Thank you Mr. Phillips for a very very absorbing session. In fact, in fact uh, we have got very good uh, questions on the chat and people have been asking so many things. 
okay so without uh, because since the time uh, available is uh, very little i would straight away come to the questions so yes. that whatever queries uh, the participants have in their mind mm -hmm. uh, you are able to ask. Uh, i think uh, the first question is from tania shaw please guide how to get nlp certified uh, you have discussed certain things and given your number also but one line i'll expect from you uh, how to get nlp certified all right now there are uh, there is a pathway which we have designed for nlp uh, program certification program all the three modules which we have are certification programs okay uh, our nlp basic also is a certificate program many people many psychologists actually got job because of that certification uh, the basic certification in you know schools and various organization which knows that nlp is one of the important skills uh, to have and um, all the three programs are certification programs and as i said we can do it over webinar which we are rolling it out or once the lockdown is over we actually would love to do you know in a physical presence you know presence with presence of all the participants and we have designed a program which will be only conducted during the weekends so all the programs are of 10 hours each except the nlp communication model is of 20 hours so the total program is of 40 hours and uh, you can note down my number you can message me if you are interested and we will you know let you know how you can do these programs okay the second question is from mr rajiv yadav how can neuro linguistic program help with leadership and development in this pandemic all right now as a leader what what you are expected is to manage yourself effectively as well as you are you know you have a responsibility over the people and managing them now neuro linguistic programming give us gives us the understanding about human mind and behavior and based on that you can actually manage people very effectively in fact the basic reason why the multinational company and the business leaders have adopted nlp because it gives them the skill to manage people as leaders and i will not name over here but all the top you know people in the world they learn this technology so uh, if you if you want to learn to the level of leadership then you can uh, learn at least basic and nlp advanced uh dr k sanjay kumar is asking uh, can we apply nlp to people who have wealth but no mental peace of course of course because this is to do with the human mind and people you know we can apply and help people from all kinds of situations right from uh, restlessness to you know uh, phobias to depression to you know uh, non performance learning disability so all kinds of issues because it's to do with the human mind arpita gangli is asking please advise on gestalt principle as well and how it is linked to nlp gestalt uh, sorry, principle so, uh, can you repeat the question because it cracked uh, please advise on gestalt principles g e s t a l t yeah gestalt yeah gestalt principle yeah, gestalt principle as well and how it is linked to nlp see just how principle talks about the sum of whole that means in a, in a layman's language when you talk about just how principle you know we see from the helicopter view we, we see from you know a higher level and we see the complete picture so there are some techniques in nlp by which you can actually uh, have a larger picture of the whole situation which you are experiencing so the larger That's picture is called as the gestalt view and as we have with drones today sorry the police police is using drones today yeah to so have a better view of the holistic uh, yes exactly yeah. exactly the the higher you go the bigger yeah. picture you yeah. get and vidya rao is asking uh, how is rebt different from nlp rebt 
REBT and neuro linguistic programming have a lot of similarities because you know they use cognitive behavioral and NLP also uh, has drawn principles from cognitive and behavioral sciences. But the approach is very different because you know it was seen from the perspective of a computer engineer and a mathematician and a linguist. So from that, when the approach is different, you know, the uh, technology or the technique, what they saw came out to be very different as compared to, you know, a person who has done psychology and, you know, learn from the psychology perspective. In fact, uh, there are many psychologists who have learned NLP and they said that for the first time we are understanding what we studied in the book of psychology after doing NLP. Yeah. Arpita Ganguly has another question. Our habits and behaviors are also linked to our genes or forefathers. Is it true? Uh, I, would, I would not agree to this that all our habits are linked to, you know, uh, the genetics, uh, biological issue, because all the behaviors are learned behavior. Because when we talk about habit, what is a habit? It's a behavior. When do a person learns that? You will be surprised. You know, what we say, key, you know, what we say is that when a son exactly do or does like the father, you say that, oh, this is a genetic. But actually, it's not genetic. It's the son who has actually learned unconsciously through mirroring when the son was very young and he used to watch the father the way the father is to sit, talk, walk, do everything. And those unconscious learning became now the part of that child and now that child also does a lot of similar things so it's not genetic it's learned behavior so i have one question yes sir uh can uh nlp activate subconscious mind yes we and can how? activate the subconscious mind and through how? therapy hmm. through therapy we can activate the subconscious mind and not only just therapy, now when I was talking to all the people who were listening, already their subconscious was activated and a lot of things started to take place in their subconscious mind. Okay. Uh, Prabhakar Mishra is asking, mm -hmm. I somehow feel there lies certain similarities between NLP and ancient Indian spiritual practices of meditation and pranayama. Uh, fine analogy from Bhagavad Gita too. Could you comment on this? See, because it's a human technology, whether the human is a modern human or an ancient human, okay, the technology is the same. Now, NLP is not something that has been uh, uh, invented. It was discovered, which was already existing in human behavior and, you know, uh, the way human functions what they understood is how it functions so there are definitely principles which have been learned and uh, devised in all religions of how people should behave and what they should be doing so definitely it goes into the ancient human uh, behavior and the way they used to do because the human mind has never changed it's just we have learned too much in the modern time and Devesh Walia, this is the last question. Devesh Walia is asking, can we change the behavior through NLP? Can yes, we change the behavior can change through the behavior. NLP? Through so NLP. Which behavior? Which behavior? Uh, they have not specified. Devesh has not specified the, the behavior, but uh, maybe whatever behavior they want to change. Yes, yes, we can change the behavior because behavior is the outcome of the process that is taking place in your mind. If you change the process, the behavior changes. It's as simple as that. You know, if you understand computers, it's very easy to understand. One program produces a result. If you don't want that result, you change the program. The moment you change the program, the results are different. So if you design the program to produce a strategic behavior, you can design or program yourself to produce a specific behavior also. It means, as per our requirement, 
as per as our per, our as per our need can we reprogram our mind yes we can reprogram our mind we can architect and design our mind to produce you know strategic outcomes strategic behavior so whatever uh, programs you have suggested during this program or during this webinar i am very sure that whatever objectives our viewers have in their mind and they have specific uh, thoughts uh, they will definitely be gaining that insight and kuch buri aadatein jaise pad jati hain you want to win over them you want to change you want to improve upon lot of behavioral things yes. so i am very sure that nlp will be giving them a way out to unlearn and re relearn yes right? yes exactly exactly so that is a very big end thing and really and, and that's uh, that's, uh, that's you know that's so relieving because people are stuck they yeah, feel that we yeah, can never yeah, come out yeah, yeah, yeah. but nlp tells you that uh, you have learned it you can unlearn also and you can learn a new one also oh, yeah. okay amazing amazing so thank you very much uh, mr philips i am indeed grateful Pleasure. to you for conducting this webinar and at the outset uh, i would like to thank uh, my patrons uh, who have joined in this program i'm uh, especially thankful to mr daniel kurian uh, rvp west who was uh, there in this program uh, mr manwar mr pradeep kamath pratima kaushal mr panikar robina philips arpita ganguly dr antil durgesh bhat uh, jagbandhu banerji there are lot many others whom i am not able to uh name here but definitely the places from where the participants came from chennai indore mathura bareilly uh nagpur hyderabad delhi bangalore mumbai in fact all all over india participants came i am really thankful to all of you for showing your keen interest and again i invite you to our forthcoming every wednesday and uh, saturday we are keeping the same time 5:30 to please look forward to our programs and thanks very much again for coming thank you very thank much you. Thank pleasure you. pleasure thank you thank you sir